Hello everyone, this is Mehmet. Um, today I'm going to walk you through the calculation of XIRR or annualized rate of return formula on Excel. Uh, first of all, why would you need this calculation? Uh, you might be tracking your portfolio performance versus other alternatives such as bank interest rates for example. Or uh, you might be making a lot of deposits and withdrawals throughout the year or within a certain long-term period like three, four, five years and you might want to calculate the long-term annualized uh, rate of return performance of your portfolio. Uh, let's, let's move on with uh, what the calculation looks like and what the data set looks like in, looks like in my uh, example. So here uh, I have transactions on this column here dates of the transactions and amounts of the transactions so that's basically all you need uh, you actually don't even need to write down the transactions because all you need is for the calculation for the formula purposes all you need is the dates and the amounts however just to make sure that you know what you're writing down uh, for you to not to forget you might want to just put down the transactions as well so here what we have is <clears throat> We have a beginning value. Let's assume that this is the this is your portfolio uh, at the at the beginning of 2016, which we put down as 1 January 2016, and the amount was 27 and a half thousand. So, why do we put this as beginning value? We don't have to put this as beginning value. It's basically a deposit because once if you're calculating your performance for the year 2016. Uh, you can assume that the beginning value is just deposit because it means like you're just withdrawing from the year 2015 and depositing that amount into the year 2016. Uh, but whatever you name it, it doesn't matter. In this formula, uh, for the purposes of calculation on this formula, on the XIRR formula, we put the deposits down in minuses in terms of amounts, as you can note here, and the withdrawals in pluses. Um, and after this, we just put down what we deposited into the account at on what dates and at what amount, and then do the same for the withdrawals. So withdrawals, in this case, they're all in line. So first we did all like uh, nine deposits, and then we did four withdrawals after that. But they don't have to be in the same order. This in this order, the withdrawals can be in between or deposits can be at the end, etc. So it just doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the deposits should have a negative sign. It's kind of counterintuitive, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, and the withdrawals should have a positive sign, as you see here. And since beginning value is also a deposit, we just put it down as negative as well. <clears throat> and the ending value is today's date. Uh, today's portfolio value uh, which is 16th of November six, 2016 and uh, the value is let's say at 55,000 so this is this is my data set and now we're gonna calculate the annualized rate of return with the formula XIRR so let's come to this formula it's pretty basic uh, you just do F2 here and what we do is equals XIRR, you can also see it here, equals XIRR in parentheses, uh, the amounts, and then the dates, and then 0 and 1 for some of the parameters of this formula, which is uh, not so much important. But if you want to really get uh, deeper in this form into this formula, you can go from the formula section of Excel, which is here insert uh, function uh, so when you when you click insert function then you will see the rest of the details but for the sim for simplicity's sake i'm just showing you that basically the formula includes um, xirr amounts dates and that's about it and then zero and one you can just put it down there and then this will spit out a form a calculation in this case it's 40.7 percent annualized return Please note that this is the annualized return. It's not the exact return that you have because let's look at the numbers. You put in a total of 42,667 
let's write it down 42667 and you withdrew <coughs> including the ending value you withdrew a total of 56,070 if we calculate the arithmetic return the figure is much different it's 31.41% or in other words 31.4% which is quite different why because one this is not annualized it's from um, January 1st to 16th of November two it doesn't uh, incorporate the different time frames when we did the deposits and withdrawals which is quite important in this calculation because uh, what we're doing above here is that we're trying to see we're trying to look at what if I deposited this money at the bank at that date what would have happened so in order to, in order to in order for you to be able to calculate your returns towards versus um, bank interest you have to put the exact dates of your deposits into your portfolio, into your stock market portfolio, etc., so that you can compare it to the other alternatives. So this is just a very arbitrary calculation. So you don't need that. I mean, this is this is exactly what you need for doing a professional uh, compared, compa comparable, comparable uh, calculation for your portfolio returns. So I also wanted to show you. Um, a basic version of this so that you understand the calculation is is correct and it does what it needs to do so I have some data here let me show you that so let's assume that you had beginning value of again 27 and a half thousand which is put in uh, minus because it's the deposit amount and this is deposited in January 1st of this year and let's assume there's no deposit or no withdrawals throughout the year and let's assume at the end of this year 31st of December 2016 you have again 55,000 and you have the same formula here XRR amounts and dates and the result is 100% so as you can see your portfolio doubled in value and you have exactly one year passed in between so your result is just 100 percent so annualized number equals the actual number so if we take this back let's say 15 days let's assume it's 15th of December then this number this result the XRR result should go up because that means you doubled your uh, portfolio you doubled your portfolio in a time frame which is less than a year so your annualized number has gone up to 106.5%. Or let's do another trick. Let's show, uh, let's say that our ending portfolio is at the end of 2017. And let's assume the amount is same. So our annualized rate of return went down from 100% to 41.4%. Why 41.4% but not 50%? Because this is including compounding factor in other words this tells you that you took your twenty seven and a half thousand you first um, multiplied it by 1.41 and then for the next year you multiplied that result with again 1.41 so that's including the compounding factor you end up doubling your portfolio at the end of two years so if it was only nominal interest then nominal calculation then this would have been 50 percent but it's not the case here because it assumes it factors in the in the compounding effect as well and if you just multiply 1.41 by 1.41 you will get exactly two uh, not exactly in this case there's rounding but yeah you, you get you get my point here it's it's just gonna add up to a hundred percent increase that's all I have to say for XRR formula. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Thank you.